Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Israeli jazz pianist Shai Maestro. We caught up with him to talk about his latest 2021 CD called Human, COVID-19, His Life in Jazz, and so much more. He began playing classical piano at the age of five and went on to win the National Jazz Ensembles Competition, Jazz Signs, in 2002 and 2003. That led to the Berklee College of Music and sharing the stage with the likes of Avashai Cohen, Chick Corea, Esperanza Spaulding, and Diana Krall. There's so many adventures that he gets into. Enjoy his story. Hey, thank you for taking some time out today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. You bet. First and foremost, your latest CD called Human. Talk to me a little bit about this coming out during a pandemic. How do you feel about it coming out during this particular time with things that are going on? <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, it's a, it's a complex uh, decision to take because obviously, you know, when you release an album, like the natural thing that follows is a tour. You know, you, you go on stage and play the music for the people, and we can't do it uh, during the, the pandemic. But we decided to, to go for it, which for several reasons. One is that it just, it just felt like it needed to come out. We recorded it a year ago when I wanted to release it. It worked out with ECM's uh, release schedule. And also, I think people, you know, I, I enjoyed other people's releases during that time. Um, it, it helped me uh, it, it helped me get through it. And, and if, if my album can help other people get through this uh, crazy period, then, and, you know, we've done our share. Well said. What do you ultimately want the listener to get from this project, this artistic expression that you put out? Oh, not, nothing. It's not. It's not my my thing to say. I uh, I I think the music really invites everyone to kind of enter and find their own stories, or you know, find their their, their own uh, listening pleasure. And it's it's not up to me to say. I, I just try to, to create music as honestly as I can. So speaking of the pandemic, and obviously all musicians and artists are missing the live stage, what do you miss the most in that old world from March of last year that you're looking forward to getting back to as, you know, the, the vaccines start spreading and things start getting a little better? Yeah, we actually, I'm in Israel right now, and actually, um, we're, the country is doing great with the vaccines, um, and so they actually opened up the culture life again so uh, two weeks ago i had my first concert and so i can um first of all i think it could be a message of hope to everyone that like there's there would be there's been a lot of talks about like it's never going to be the same and people are going to be afraid going it's like really not the case like once uh once people are vaccinated and the vaccine is proven to 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 work people go out again people interact people gather and and celebrate celebrate life so i I know the 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 u.s it will take a little bit more time but it's it's coming and so like it's just um it was one of the most amazing feelings to be on stage again i I couldn't stop smiling for like two hours after the that that first gig um the interaction with the people um the the fact that you um that it sounds trivial, but that you play a note, you, you you try to create beauty, and it actually gets to someone, someone in someone's ears is is uh, is magical, and it's it's pushing the artist to 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 dig in deeper. Um, you see the happiness in people's faces, like everybody is so thirsty for culture, and so it, it's great, and so it's coming, you know, worldwide. It's gonna it's gonna happen sooner than later. I hope. Yeah, indeed. So you started playing the piano at five. Was your dream always to be a musician? Um, yeah, I pretty pretty much. Uh, I always wanted. To, I always did it because I loved it. And then, at like a, around fifteen or sixteen, I I realized what it would take to become a f- full time musician and to kind of like to fulfill, or at least to try to fulfill my my my, my, my potential. And I thought it's going to be too much for me because it takes a, there's a lot of sacrifice that needs to happen for you to fulfill your potential as a musician. And so um, as I was questioning my, my future, I just kept on playing. And so the decision was taken by, by, by itself. Like I didn't have to do anything. So um, it, it was clear for me. Yes, that's my... Who are some early jazz influences, early albums, things that really you gravitated towards? The first piano player i heard that like introduced the first jazz record uh, that i heard was oscar peterson uh playing the gershwin song- songbook um and to this day when i listen to it I-, I i am always amazed by how good it is it's just so to the point so swinging so subtle and beautiful and his tone of the piano is, is really magnificent and so like oscar was my my entry 
point to uh, to this world, and then later on, I discovered the you know Wynton Kelly and and Art Tatum and 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 Hank Jones and uh, and Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, um, just the Brent Miller, the entire you know lineage of, of piano players and and and, and musicians, and so uh, Errol Gardner is another one that I really love. Yeah, there's there's some so many I can't I can't name all of them. <laughs> What was the first live jazz show you saw that really, really got you inspired? So, I think I was 11 or 12. I saw Chick Corea uh, at the Stockholm Jazz Festival. And he was playing with uh, Abishai Cohen, the bass player that I later on joined his band. And I remember that show being really uh, magical. It was like magical. It was uh, outdoor. My parents took me there in Stockholm, Sweden. And they went on stage, I think it was Jeff Ballard and drums. And, and um, again, like to this day, when I listen to Past, Presents and Futures, which is their album, the Chicory and New Trio album, I, I, I think they're just like so brilliant, the three of them. And, and it hit me then also. I saw, I saw it live and it wasn't clear to me that I, want, I wanted to beat them. It was too, it was too good. It was like out of, out of reach almost. And so, but but it started. It was so powerful that it started the engine of uh, of just uh, yeah, just a lifelong digging in process. So you've been pretty fortunate from the word go. You've just really ascended up the jazz hierarchy, and you your, your career has just always taken off. What's been the most surprising part about your career that uh, maybe people don't know about that that has really kind of surprised you and been a, a great benefit to your career? Uh, the jazz, vo- the, the traditional jazz vocabulary, not it's so. But the records that I put out uh, to this day don't, uh, except with the exception of the last one that has one track that I wrote. It's called Hank and Charlie, so, which is a dedica- dedication to Hank Johnson, Charlie Hayden. So uh, I didn't play any standards, or I didn't even present that language uh, in an kind of like official uh, way. I always had. You know, I try to create my own music, which is also influenced a lot by like you know uh, European classical music, Debussy, Ravel, you know Mozart, Bach, and 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 a lot of Israeli music, a lot of folklore stuff from around the world. And um, but the, the 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 building blocks, the DNA of my language is is traditional jazz, standard jazz, and so. I, I lived ten years in New York, and and I've just played so many gigs where I. You know, you play five sets of, of jazz standards, and you know I'm, I'm obsessed with learning ballads like you know Nat King Cole stuff, Frank Sinatra. Learning the lyrics, I love laying behind singers. I um, I really enjoy just like you know swinging on a tune, and so so that's uh, something that I I'm feeling more and more confident of letting out because I, I just have so much respect for 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 the for the history and the, the legacy of, of of this music. That I, I always found my place in, in you know, in my with my own sound. But now I'm. It's important to acknowledge that it's all sitting on, on Black American music. You know, that's that's where it comes from, and so that's uh, good for people to know. What talk to me a little bit about? You've been around some pretty heavy hitters in jazz. What have you learned from like the legends, luminaries, the veterans of jazz that have in turn helped you teach younger players that you're around? Yeah. So. Um, one uh, experience that I remember, I mean, I, I had the, the, I had the, the privilege of playing, as you said, uh, with, with some some great great musicians, and they all had different ways of, of leading the band. And so, for example, like Avishai Cohen, the bass player, would like really get specific with what with what he wants, and we talk a lot about like sound and legato and blah blah blah, all this, good, which which is great, you know. And then I played with with Terrence Blanchard's band for for a minute. And Terrence just doesn't say a word. It's it, it's like it's just leading by example, and he's just being the amazing musician he is. And you pick up on the on, on you pick up the vibe and the, the body body language, and it's more like a nonverbal communication that that gets the band to where he wants it to be. I know uh, Roy Hargrove used to be that way. Um, I find the balance between. In both things like I, I like to, when I present a new song to the band I like to really uh, explain my vision and let them understand the song from the, from the inside um, and then once we finish talking about it, it the, the rule is always to forget everything I just said um, and just open the door for them to for my side men to to fully express themselves and and I, I believe that if you if you hire people 
to play, it's a waste not to let them play and to and to kind of define too much how they should sound, you know. And so uh, it's a it's a thin line that I that I learned to walk on as a um, as I go. But yeah, every every band leader has a different thing, and it's it's wonderful. I love being a sideman. That's like another thing that the, not a lot of people know. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to just take on another person's music and try to do justice to it. So we kind of touched a little bit on, you know, getting back to live music and how wonderful that show was that you played. But when it starts happening in earnest and a lot of people start coming out into the crowds and a lot of musicians get on the stage, what do you hope we all collectively have realized about this long absence away from live music? Um, the, just the pure magic of, of, of communication. I mean, it's like it's such an obvious thing that we take for granted being in a room with other people you know like and uh i remember i remember that that gig two weeks ago was great it was felt, felt great musically but there was some moments that we were searching and we didn't really find what what we wanted to find um in the music but it didn't matter because i was so overwhelmed by the feeling of like the community you know of of of, of people helping each other out and i think music is is such a it's an important thing in life that, that can help us, you know, like we were, we're all, we're all in the same boat. I remember I, I exchanged, exchanged some emails with Chikoria, um, that, that passed away a few, few weeks ago or like a month ago. And he always encouraged me to create. And he always said like, we're in this together, you know, like do it for the better, for the, for the, for the better good for, for, but it's an ecosystem. And so, um, that that sense of of gathering is is really something that that can't be taken for granted. It will be taken for granted because we tend to forget as as humans. But but uh, after a year of being isolated, that that was just so clear. And so, yeah. Wow, that's that's deep. So everyone has a perception or an idea of who they think you are. Your family, your friends, your fans. But you're living your life. Who do you think mm-hmm. you are? Hmm. Great question. I've, during the pandemic, I've, I've made a differentiation between shy maestro and shy, <laughs> and I understood that, like, as as artists, we tend to not just artists. I think an, every person has its, his or her own um, image of who they are. If that makes sense, you know, you wake up and you that person. You wake up and you're 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 Barack Obama, and you live. You do. You know. You you do things that 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 character would do and and the pandemic because it, because everything stopped it made me question everything so like do i really want to do it or 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 am i just being pulled by that by that by that engine that shy maestro uh, engine and i realized that a lot of things that shy maestro would do shy doesn't want to do and so um ironically the music became better from the shy place rather than the shy maestro place and so that taught me that the more honest you are, the more, you know, the, the, the less afraid you are of, like, uh, uh, admitting your, be it insecurities or, 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 or imperfections, uh, the, more, the more human you become. Um, and then the music just benefits from it. And I think that's what I love so much about, like, Wayne Shorter's music, for example. I always feel such strong humanity coming out of, of every note that he plays and it's not always in tune it's not always perfect but it's all it's, it, it always is perfect because it's it's human that's that's really the point of calling my album human is just like that that process of accepting imperfection insecurities all, all that it's a, it's a part of the of this music jazz is music of the people it's always been like that it started from 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 the blues it started from you know very human sources yeah. That's wonderful, man. Hey, thank you for opening up about your new album, The Return to the Stage and Your Life of Music. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And to you too, and I hope the vaccine gets you uh, fast. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. Where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in Israel, Boston, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Shy for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends.
Neon Jazz.